any new this um, videos thank you for watching thank you for your, all your questions and comments you last week and the weeks before we really appreciate them yeah we love the comments <laughs> <Sorry>. very very <laughs> sweet <laughs> well maybe not all the comments most of the comments yeah <laughs> some of them are quite informative <laughs> um, but this week we're talking about one of silky's um unique hand saws so this is a fantastic saw for fast cutting um, especially in the commercial sense as well, and you need us to take you away with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have a really cool silky saw to talk about this week. Um, it's called the Yamabuko, and so many people don't know that this saw exists, and I don't know why, because it is so cool, and it is so fast, and so unique. So, we're going to introduce it to you. This little baby here is the silky Yamabuko. So what's so cool about this saw? Because Silky makes so many and they make them with all different teeth, but this one is super special because this is designed to be your speed cutting saw. So if speed is your thing, you have a need for speed. That's right. <laughs> fast cars, fast lots of things. Fast this, is <laughs> this is your fast saw. <laughs> okay, and the reason this is so fast and so cool is, well, there's so many reasons, but the main reason is the teeth. So we have little teeth at the top here and huge teeth on the bottom. Now, teeth this size on a straight blade is quite unique. So that's amazingly cool. And to have the little teeth on the top and the big teeth on the bottom, well, that might confuse some of you, but it's also pretty cool. But the reason they did it is not just to have a really unusual looking saw that sort of looks like they couldn't decide whether they want big or little teeth. There was far more reasoning behind it than that. The reason is, if you're cutting a branch and it's really important to you how the, the cut is, the finished cut, the start of the cut, the actual finished uh. product, <laughs> being really technical today, um, <laughs> you would normally need to carry two saws because big teeth, ordinarily, I mean there's exceptions to this rule, whether it's dead wood, um, dry timber, hard timber, all that sort of stuff as to what tooth size we use, but ordinarily, let's generalise, big teeth cut faster. So, if you were using big teeth because you're commercially cutting and you need this to happen quickly, it's not necessarily going to give you the best finish cut. So you would need to take another saw with you with smaller teeth to recut that end bit of the branch after you've done the first cut. And I know a lot of companies that do do that, particularly companies that work on like plantation sort of cutting, they will often carry a smaller saw with small teeth to do finish cuts after they've done their, their quick fast cut with a bigger saw. So this saves you having to do this. Having the little teeth on the front, on the top allows you to do a really, really nice undercut before you throw the saw up and do, well, don't throw up, but you know, loop it up and, and do your actual fast cut. So all silky saws, as we've mentioned lots and lots of times, cut on the pull stroke only. So very important when you go to use the saw, my arm is your pretend branch. You start your cut right up here next to the handle. So not at the tip of the saw, right up next to the handle. So many people start up here and then they push the saw forward and then pull it back. Well, you're always going to put forward pressure, shall we say, by starting your cut in that direction. So always start it on the handle. Now, side, you know, going to the side point here, somebody said to me the other day, well, you're always going to put pressure on the forward straight because it's obviously forward, back, forward, back. That's how you cut. And that is true. But it's, it's not that you don't go forward, it's just you don't put pressure on that forward stroke excessively because all it's doing is cleaning the wood out of the teeth and bringing you back to the start position where you can pull again and actually cut the wood. So it's backwards and forwards, obviously, but the pressure is this way and then you kind of glide it forward. So you do that cut after you've put the saw underneath and done a couple of pulls, again pulling because this is a pull saw even though it's on the top, they still cut in the pull direction. So you knock that up under the branch do a couple of pull strokes, put it up on the top of the branch, and then do the total cut. Really should have worked out the word for that. But anyway, cut your branch off after you've done your undercut with these little teeth. So really cool. And the other reason why this is so super fast is not just um, that it's got really big teeth, but it's also the style of tooth. Now, if you're in a shop or you've got a catalogue and you want a saw that's got a specific kind of tooth, so can you make the packaging really, really informative for you. So all you need to do is have a quick little look at the packaging. And if you do, you'll see here that this says it's a 33 centimeter long blade, so really long. Um, and then you'll see it says seven plus 10 teeth. Now that means that the bottom teeth here are seven teeth per 30 millimeters. And then the top teeth 
uh, 10 teeth per 30 millimeters. So um, that's that way you can sort of tell with the different saws the comparison, I guess, of tooth size. And then the other neat thing is if you twirl it around, it gives you a few features. And we were talking about the style of tooth before. So this one here has a tooth style called a Midami tooth. Now what that means is it gives a super, super smooth cut. So not only... So this allows the, the fresh wound that you've created on the tree to heal over really quickly. So when you use a saw with quite aggressive teeth, it'll dig lines into the timber. With this style of tooth, the Metami tooth, it'll be an incredibly smooth finish, nearly like you've sanded it with a piece of paper like you can see in this um, image here. Absolutely beautiful. Tree will be incredibly happy that you chose a saw with teeth like this. Now we're gonna hand over to Sinead and she's gonna talk all about the amazing scabbard that the Yamabuko comes with. The scabbard is pretty cool in itself as well. Um, starting off as all silky um, hand saws, it has the little belt loop as well, so um, it's whoop, whoop, whoop. Mm -hmm. can attach it or not attach it, whatever you decide. Um, as well, it has the little loop in the um, in the hoop thing as well, <laughs> belt loop as well. So great for putting a through a D clip or if you want to put some string for whatever reason. Same with the little hole at the top. Um, I know we had a um, contracting business come through to us this week and they have um, different color zip ties on all their products so they know which truck to put it in so this is a great little spot to hang um, put your little different colors zip ties or whatever you use to identify which truck it goes into um, the scabbard, scabbard's cool, <laughs> scabbard's cool in itself as well it has really cool casing it has um, so say you are climbing up in the tree as well and you don't want the saw flicking around everywhere, um, Silky have solved it with the belt hoops, loops as well, sorry, no, leg straps. <laughs> belt loop too. Yeah, got belt loop, sorry. And it's got the leg straps as well. Um, same if you are climbing up in a tree all day and there's wood chips flying everywhere. Um, all Silky hand saws as well have the little holes in the um, end as well so that the wood chips fall through. Um, this red screw, this red screw attaches the blade and the handle together, but it also works well with the scabbard as well to help it keep it locked in place. Um, another unique thing as well, it has the roller system as well. So as all silky, as you needed was explaining before, <laughs> all silky's cut on pull strokes as well, and pulling a handsaw out of its scabbard can like cause it through grip and make it difficult to come out but Silky have solved that with the double um, the rolling system as well so it makes it easy to just glide in you probably can't see it but <laughs> yes it doesn't even matter which side you put it back in because the rollers are on both sides yeah exactly so that's another little great point, uh, point about it so it just makes it easier to glide in and out so red screw and screw it the red screw, insert elevator music. <laughs> um, it's super important as well. I did this mistake before. Um, you take the handle, probably a little safe, unsafe like this. Take the handle the way the blade is point. Uh, the handle is pointing because so the handle is pointing down. So you slide the handle down, and it's easy to just pop in and out as it is. Don't try to pull it this way <laughs> like I was before because it does not come out. <laughs> um, yeah, super important to wear cut proof gloves because I just cut myself through that. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's just one single screw that is strong enough to hold both the blade and the saw together nice and tightly and fit back in its scabbard. So that's the unique thing about this. As well, you need to forgot to mention. Oh. <laughs> she picks up on me, I pick up on her. <laughs> it has the hollow grounding um, grounded blade as well, and it has the special um, chrome um, plating on it as well to help to prevent rust from coming back or not coming back for right, keep Try to keep rust off your blade, but as if you always look after your blade, um, will stay nice and clean. And as you know, we've mentioned a million times that Australian saps are very harsh as well, so <laughs> good thing to keep in mind and always. So we might do a little demo now of how the Yamabuki actually cuts um, and then it's all a matter of you going out and getting yourself one because these are fabulous and you're going to love it. Yes. Just remember, don't cut yourself, cut the tree. <laughs> So I'm not sure if you can see there, but there is just a beautiful, smooth, finished cut. Now I did it a couple of times because I kept making things fall off the table. 
This time I didn't do quite as good a job because I should have gone a bit higher with my undercut, but you can still see how incredibly smooth that finishes, except for my join there. Um, but that's basically what a Yamabuki will do, which is pretty cool. Um, also, I think before today runs away. <laughs> we hope you loved that video that we just showed you of the demo saw, and we'd like to thank you for watching another one of our weekly videos. Um, I think we were going to run that promo again this week, weren't we, with the reviews? Yes, we are. So, um, as well, are uh, we giving away awesome key rings from Silky? Uh, only to the first 10. So, put a review on our website of what's your favourite product or a product that you just used once and you love it. <laughs> um, write it down and we'll send you off a key ring. So, so yeah, we've got 10 key rings to give away within Australia. So, yes, get, very. <laughs> get writing those reviews. We'll do a little thing up on the screen showing you where it is on the website, arbalab.com.au. And uh, we'll see you next week. Love the comments, so throw some up and give us some ideas of what we'll talk about. Thanks, bye. <laughs>